for your faithfulness. The fact that you come through every time is a testimony of who you are. God, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your love for us. God, we thank you that when we turn away from you, you continue to keep your arms wide open. Yeah, yeah. Lord, we thank you so much for the sacrifice that you made on Calvary's cross. Yeah. Hallelujah. Lord, we are standing in your presence and we ask that you would forgive us for our sins. Will you cleanse us from all unrighteousness? Forgive us for the things that we've done this week that we should not have done, the thoughts that we have. The things that we should have done that we didn't do, we ask for your forgiveness. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Break us and mold us, then shape us to do your will. Lord, speak to our hearts. People have a desire to hear your voice. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Have your way in this place. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You'll stand with me. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. First Corinthians chapter 11. I'll be reading verses 17 through 26. But in giving this instruction, I do not praise you. Because you come together not for the better, but for the worse. For in the first place, when you come together as a church, I hear that divisions exist among you. And in part I believe it, for there must also be factions among you, so that those who are approved may become evident among you. Therefore, when you meet together, is it not to eat the Lord's Supper? For in your eating, each one takes his own supper first, and one is hungry and another is drunk. What? Do you not have houses in which you eat and drink? Or do you despise the church of God and shame those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you? In this I will not praise you. Verse 23. For I receive from the Lord that which I also deliver to you that the Lord Jesus in the night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you do this in remembrance of me and in the same way he took the cup also after supper saying this cup is a new covenant in my blood do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me for as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. You may be seated. On last week we were charged with the reprimand. The Corinthians were coming together to observe the Passover. They were coming together to observe the Lord's Supper and there was selfishness among them. They were bringing their own meals and they were eating their meals and they were not sharing with those who didn't have and, and Paul reprimands them. This morning we are moving from the reprimand to the call to remember. All of us have 
dates in our minds that we remember. I remember January 25th, 1991. That was the day that I said, I do. I didn't know what I was getting into, <laughs> but nonetheless, I said, I do to my beautiful wife. I remember November 9th, 1998, when after seven years of trying to have a child, we had a child. The doctor said it wouldn't happen, but God said otherwise. Amen. I remember some three years ago, I met a young man by the name of Lewis. and been growing with this young man since then. There are a lot of dates that we remember. Many of us remember our birth dates. Some of us remember death dates. And it's always important for us to remember. All throughout the Old Testament, God would have the Israelites set up monuments of remembrance. And it's good to look back every now and then to see where God has brought us from. Brother Kent has shared, you remember the time when you were strung out on drugs and God took it away. Elder Ernie, you remember the time when you heard those words, you have cancer and, and sometime later God healed you. And listen, we need to look back and remember and share those testimonies of God's faithfulness. Many of us can remember those days when we said in our marriage that this is it. I've had all I can stand and I can't stand no more. And then God started working on Sister Donna, brother, brother Well. She started working on her. <laughs> and he ain't finished yet. Uh, we have days that we remember. It is good for us to remember. The old folk would say, my soul looks back. That's a time of remembrance. It's a time of recalling a, a wanting to throw in the towel and God somehow made a way when there was no way. And so this morning we are charged with a call to remember. Looking here in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 26. Goes on to say, 4, verse 23, I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you. This is Paul speaking to the Corinthians. He says that the Lord Jesus on the night, say the night. The night was the time most notably known as the Passover. The Jews would come together and they would observe the Passover. I want you to put your uh, thumb here and flip back to Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12. Of course, the Passover was instituted because it was a reminder of how God had brought the children of Israel out of 430 years of bondage. It was important for the Israelites to remember because God is faithful. And they were in bondage and most of us get into situations because of our own sin and yet God continues to, to give us a way out every time we turn around. He seems to be making a way. Even when we don't deserve it, he continues to make a way, and that is God's amazing grace. The Israelites were no different than us. They would often forget about God's faithfulness. They would, uh, they would go through these cycles in life. They would, uh, they would worship God, and, and then things would go well, and then they would find chapter 12. I want to start at verse 7 and just 
selectively picking passages out of Exodus chapter 12. Here in verse 7 it says, Moreover, they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the house in which they eat it. They shall eat the flesh that same night, roasted with fire, and they shall eat it unleavened with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Of course, you know about the last plague and Pharaoh decided that he was not going to let God's people go until the last plague came along and he was killing all of the firstborn children. And then ultimately, God told the children of Israel, I'm going to kill all the firstborn children and those who have blood on the doorposts, I will pass over you. The death angel will pass over. And this is where we get the idea of the Passover. And so they were regularly observing the Passover to remember God's faithfulness and how he had kept them. And he gave them here in Exodus chapter 12 instructions on how to observe the Passover. He says in verse 13 of Exodus chapter 12, The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live, and where I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Somebody say, thank God. says back in 1 Corinthians 
For I received, verse 23, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, for I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So Jesus is looking at this during this Passover time. He's taking this, this, this observance and he is, trans, he is actually transforming this, uh, this Passover to a new covenant. Jesus, on the night in which he was to be delivered, he instituted a new covenant and he gave the bread to his disciples. And he
giving thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body. Uh, yeah. Which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. It goes on to say in the same way in verse 25, he also took the cup after supper. So this is kind of lets you know that there was a meal that was basically a formal meal going on and, and they would eat it. Each time they came together, Acts chapter 2 lets us know that they continued steadfastly in Acts 2, 42 and the apostles' doctrine and, and prayer and breaking of bread and fellowship. So they came together regularly to meet and they would come together and they would have fellowship and among their fellowship was often a meal. And so this
remember that he's coming back just as he said I want to ask our deacons to come as we observe the Lord's Supper if you've not been served communion
is wrong girl. 